Julie Gunlock, thank you so much for joining us in studio today. It's good to see you again. Thanks for having me. You bet. All right. So you've been very busy writing here uh, and summer is quickly approaching uh, just a couple of weeks left, depending on where you live in the country and maybe your kids are out of school. No. Some of you may have to wait a few more weeks, maybe a month or so. But uh, you've got a piece that acculturated on sleepaway camp, which uh, I have to confess right up front, I, I never went to sleepaway camp. I don't know if I was. Does that make me deprived? Does that make me uh, a victim somehow, Julie? Am yes. I, uh, can I blame my parents? Can I call my dad uh, right now, live on the air, and just start crying? Can I? Can I do that? Are you? Are you feeling I don't triggered? Want to, are you feeling but, triggered uh, right now? No, <laughs> no, not really. I mean, I had my YMCA day camps, you know, as a kid. Uh, actually, I yeah. You know, I, so I you know I, honestly, I, know, but, but, I, uh, I for for as well adjusted well as I appear to be for, you know, the fifteen minutes I'm on once a week. Um, <laughs> I leave here and go crazy. Um, uh, I never went to camp. Not one. I'm not kidding you. I never once went to a camp my entire childhood. My mom said that she just never got around to signing us up. It just, she didn't even think about it. Um, so, you know, we spent a we lot need, of- We need to start a group. <laughs> I do feel, I. but I you have to I say- right here, we should start some sort of advocacy group. <laughs> But I have to say that I've heard about camps, and now that I have children of sort of camp going age, um, man, I did miss out. It, they there were a lo- there was a lot of fun to be had at these camps, and so I wrote about there's there's two different kinds of camps, right? There's the the day camps where the kids go away for you know a couple hours a day, five hours a day, seven hours, whatever it is, and then it's essentially like a school day. Um, but there's also sleepaway camps where you send your kids for a couple weeks. Um, the, this article that I wrote. Um, it was a reaction to a Washington Post piece where a woman sent her kids away for two months um, to a sleepaway camp. Um, so I, wow. yeah, yeah. And and the whole point of her article in the Washington Post was saying that, oh, she's so brave for choosing, you know, this two month day camp instead of sending her kids to sort of educational camps or college prep classes, um, SAT and ACT classes. And, you know, she claimed that, you know, she was giving her kids a rest. Well, these camps schedule kids just like school. Um, You know, they don't wake Mm. up and get to just, you know, it's not like Bear Grylls camp, you know, where you just you're dropped off in the Sierra and you have to make your way to the to the nearest town. Um, They're scheduled. And so I just kind of wrote this piece about it sure would be nice if people could just send their kids to camp and just be done with it and not have all the internal analysis over what this means. And am I doing the right thing? And am I not? doing the right thing. I mean, it's so exhausting these days. Can't we just make decisions and then not analyze it 15 different ways to make sure we're doing the right thing? I mean, it's just such a, it, it's, it's a, but it's definitely a modern phenomenon. You've just, you've just wiped out like 90% of social media, <laughs> 75% of the blog posts and like 50% of websites, Julie, in right. one fell swoop. Right. I guess that. No, of course we have to navel gaze. <laughs> of course we have to question everything. And of course we have to elevate, you know, uh, little mundane topics to issues of great and utter importance. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, it, it's interesting because you write uh, about not letting the, you know, the, this woman not letting her kids relax. Um, and you know, the, uh, she says her kids will return home with the uh, quote gobs of creativity and independence. Uh, they'll be more comfortable with who they are as people. You don't have to have a camp, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to teach those things. You know, I, 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 again, I don't feel deprived, uh, not having gone to camp as a kid. I, I think back to my days of summer as a kid and they were awesome. I mean, they were great. Yeah. There was there was nothing scheduled. It was you know wake up at eight o'clock in the morning, get a bowl of cereal, watch whatever reruns were on the uh, uh, UHF channels, and then you know go get my bike, ride up to my friend's house, and hang out for the day outside yeah. doing stuff. Maybe would you know hook doing up the stuff. Atari. Uh, come home around, you know, four o'clock, do my chores before my mom got home. And that was it. That was it. That, that was, was the great. day. It was great. Yeah. You know, I actually said in the in the piece, the ending of my piece, I said, if this woman really wants to be provocative, because she acts like she's like a super pro- provocative mom by making the tough decision <laughs> to send her kids away for two months. Um, and, you know, I'm not making fun of her for that. But I'm just like, this is not like you're not doing anything different than your kids sitting in endless SAT and ACT and college college prep courses. They're not doing anything different. They're, you you have overscheduled them. You claim you haven't. You claim you're giving them all this freedom, but a kid at a camp has zero freedom. Let me let me point out. I mean, the liability things that these people, you know, I mean, th- there is not a lot of freedom at, at these camps. I mean, it's a great experience, but it's not like they're, 
you know, just free to roam around. And I said, so at the end, you know, if she really wanted to be provocative, she really wanted to be different. She'd let her kids sit on the couch and eat Cheetos and watch reruns and be bored. Boredom, you know, is not is not going to kill your kid. Letting them be bored. You know, my kids often complain sometimes to me that they're bored. And I said, and I'm not here to entertain you. Yeah, you, fit, you I, look over there. You've got about a thousand toys. You got about a thousand books. Figure out something to do. And I'm not sort of responsible for entertaining you nonstop. And so, you know, I think um, I think a lot of people sort of, you know, she actually in the Washington Post article quotes the president of Harvard who implored parents, he wrote an open letter to parents and implored them, you know, essentially let your kids be bored, right, over the summer. Give them a break. Mm-hmm. He said, or let them get a summer job, right? I mean, can you imagine? And, and, uh, and you know, so she seems to understand the importance of giving kids a little time off and yet you know, then claims the solution is to send them away to a camp where they'll be scheduled nonstop. So I just find a lot of this, um, you know, these these parent uh, parents trying to find a solution to a, really a problem, and 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 they're creating just another problem. So it's it's an interesting uh, interesting issue to write on. You know who really gets time off when you send your kids away for two months? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Just saying. I'm just, just saying. saying. I'm not yeah. saying there's an ulterior motive or anything. I'm just saying, you know. And I'm all for sending time your kids off away. Really important, and uh, I, and, and don't listen, get me wrong. I, I, I am too. I am all for. If you want to send your kids away, send them away. If you want to put them in day camps, fine. I'm just saying, don't 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 schedule your kids nonstop through the summer and claim you're not scheduling your kids nonstop through the summer. That's what I'm saying. And also it's just, it's yet more judgment on parents who do decide to do these things. Again, I think parents need to, there needs to be less judgment. Parents need to decide what's best for their own kids and what's best for their families. You know, she might really need a break from her kids. And believe me, I bet my kids would be thrilled to get away from me for a couple months. Um, they're a little young, but, um, but, but I think, I think the, the, it can benefit both people. So I'm not, I'm not trying to be judgmental of her decisions. I just, she's judgmental of everybody else's decisions. Well, I would, uh, I'll just recommend Camp Cam and Company to uh, any parents out there. Uh, it's very simple. Careful. It's a day camp. Just plop your kid in front of the laptop, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, and for three hours, uh, you know, we'll do arts and crafts, so they'll learn about politics and pop culture and things of that nature. You better be it's careful. Camp Cam and Company. People are and gonna, we have T-shirts. People we are going to take you up on that. This. People are going to take you up on that. <laughs> Will there be a petting zoo? Will there be baby goats involved at some point? These are the other questions well, Henry, people want to know. My Henry uh, doesn't. Right, so, my Henry doesn't want to come. Remember, the chicken bit him, so he's not really interested in coming down to camp. Camp and company. I think. I think that chicken is I dead. Think the rooster uh, is is now stew. excellent. Do good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good to hear. He's in a can <laughs> or jar, actually, but. Uh, <laughs> You know you're always welcome this summer. Uh, and listen, I'm going to be heading up to D.C. here before long yes. because coming up June the 2nd, we have the uh, the Women Lead uh, Conference, and I, you were kind enough to uh, ask me to be a part of this. So You're going to be our be moderator. Cam and Company gonna, Live. That's right. I love it. I talking know. Talking culture of alarmism, talking about things like this headline, Know Your Oatmeal Will Not Kill You. <laughs> Which, Julie, if you're writing a story that says, no, your oatmeal will not kill you, that means that you're responding to a piece that said, your oatmeal will kill you. Do you believe that? Can you believe that? I mean, honest to God, a couple weeks ago, there were probably a dozen or more stories saying that um, the stories involved a lawsuit that's been filed by a Berkeley, California man, naturally, um, who claims that (laughs) that these oatmeal companies have mislabeled their product, natural, they use the word natural on the outside of their box, um, because during the processing of the, the oats after they come off the field, um, they are sprayed with, a, with an herbicide. And that is used to ensure that the oats don't mold, because if the oats mold, then you can be, you can suffer. I mean, if that actually goes into production and someone eats that, then you can have food poisoning, which is a far bigger uh-huh. danger than a tiny trace amount of this pesticide or herbicide that keeps keeps the mold off. Um, so anyway, he's suing. So the stories, of course, didn't, you know, the headlines weren't, you know, money hungry guy, you know, suing food company for a settlement, you know, or for like, ri- you know, claims ridiculous pesticide poisoning. No, it said, you know, is this true? Could it be killing you? And, 
you know, so I, I sort of talked about this. And, and, and of course, it's not killing you. These are trace amounts of pesticides used in oat production, again, to stave off an actual, an actual bacteria, an actual pathogen that can harm you. Um, but what was so sad is I looked at the comments under some of these stories. Uh, one of them was in the Daily Mail. And, of course, the Daily Mail had this, oh, my God, is oatmeal killing you? And, you know, you should, you should have seen these comments. The, these, these, well, I don't know if they were women, but these commenters were saying things like, oh, no, I eat it every morning. And, oh, goodness, I thought I was being so healthy. And, oh, no, it was such a good part of my diet. And I'm th sitting here. Are you serious? I mean, so, so you know, you have these, these stories, these news stories that, you know, what's so sad is these people did have healthy habits. Getting up in the morning and having a bowl of oatmeal is a very healthy way to start the day. And now you have this article that is b total baloney. Um, and, the, and the result is that some people are going to take that out of their diet. And that just that is just very frustrating to me. These are the consequences of alarmism. You know, I talk about a lot of different consequences. This is the one that frustrates the, me the most. Oats are a cheap they're so cheap, they're so healthy, they're so filling, they're so nutritious, they have so many nutrients in them. And all, you know, all those people that saw that article, thousands of people saw that article and are now you know, switching over to what, sugary cereal or you know, something else, bacon and eggs, I mean, fine, whatever you wanna eat. There's you know, healthy other choices, but they've taken this out of their diet now. And I think that's, that's, really, too, that's really too bad. So check out my article. If you like oatmeal. Don't be ripping on bacon. Yeah, no. But I look out for those articles all the time because I want to stay on the show. But I will tell you, if, you're, if you love oatmeal and you want to keep eating oatmeal, go to The Federalist and look for my article and you will feel much better. You'll continue to eat your oatmeal. This message brought to you by Big Oatmeal. <laughs> Yeah. I'm a shill for oatmeal. What can I say? You're just a tool of, <laughs> you're just a shill for big oatmeal. I, I know am. you. Where's my money? <laughs> yeah. The shadowy Quaker <laughs> underworld of the uh, oatmeal growers. Those those crazy Quakers. Shadowy because they wear the wide-brimmed hats. <laughs> yes. Anyway, Julie, listen, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in a few <laughs> weeks, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Great. Thanks for having me. You bet. Julie Gunlock, make sure that uh, you're following all of Julie's writing. Best way to keep up with uh, where she is, because she's everywhere, is at uh, iwf.org.